In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add motion to your racing simulator cockpit, all for under £150. This is an absolutely fantastic project that adds tons of immersion a little bit more information to your sim driving experience. And well, if I can do it, anyone can do it. So uh, fasten your seatbelts and get ready for another Game of Muscle video. Those of you in the know, of course, know that uh, we haven't got full motion for £150. If I had managed to do that, I'd be patenting it and I'd be making lots of money. But what we do have for £150 is highly immersive, highly detailed and highly informative vibration, thanks to the wonderful world of tactile transducers, specifically two Dayton Audio Pucks and one Dayton Audio Bass Shaker. I'm pointing to my back because the bass shaker is on my seat and the pucks are at the front on my pedals. I'll talk a bit more about placement later in the video. Now, in order to drive these tactile transducers and make them work their magic, we are using a small sound card, specifically the Knob Sound Mini. I did not buy it because it was called the Knob Sound. I bought this sound card because it was called the Knob Sound um, and I, that fits on the sim rig and also is not just a sound card but it's also an amplifier so it keeps everything nice and tidy and neat and allows you to just wire your transducers, the seat and the pedals or the, the ones at the front of your rig all in a single unit and keeps costs down and makes things nice and simple and also makes things nice and simple on the software side. And on the software side to drive all this we are using sim hub which is an absolutely fantastic piece of software which not only can be used to drive tactile transducers but also to drive uh displays for your mobile phone or separate displays that you would add to your wheel and it does a whole bunch of other stuff as well it's absolutely fantastic sim hub uh, even if you're not doing this project get sim hub it's amazing but all said and done through uh, getting these tactile transducers wiring them up which takes about an hour or so you have really good information from the sim. So I'm gonna quickly go through how I wired them up, where I positioned them and why, and then I'm just gonna go through the software setup and explain how to use the software and what I did with the software to get the absolute most out of it. So let's take a look at the placement and the wiring of the transducers on the sim rig. Is that a knob sound mini attached to your sim rig? Why, yes, it is. There is the Knob Sound Mini sound card and amplifier with its uh, big knob, ironically. And uh, this plugged into the PC via USB here. And then the power cable for the Knob Sound amplifier sound card is here. So you've just got the two cables coming out of the Knob Sound. Um, aside from the audio cables that go to your transducers. So I've got the left hand channel here which is going to the pedal transducers and we've got the right hand channel here which goes to the bum shaker transducer trademark gamer muscle bum shake now really nicely because i'm using a sparco r33 seat we have uh, these two holes on the chair which means that i've just been able to zip tie the transducer to the chair so there's been no permanent damage and also purely coincidentally the r33 seat allows for really good commu communication and transmission of the vibration from the tactile transducer straight into your back and bottom which is really nice for letting you feel what this speaker is doing and what the back of the car is doing uh, great use of cable ties. I could remove this and no one would know that bums have been shaken in this seat. As for the other cable that goes to the front transducers, I've not tidied this up fully, but it's just a bog standard wire I've used. You could just use speaker cable or whatever you want here. And that goes down the side of the sim rig and then is just wired into the two Dayton audio pucks, which I've positioned on the accelerator and the brake pedal. The, uh, the pucks are just cable tied to the pedals which is probably not the, the best way of doing things but it's meant that I can adjust them and it's very comfortable and it works perfectly fine. I've uh, 
gone through a ton of different experimentations. You can see there's um, Velcro on the tray here. I had these pots, I put them on the tray, I put them on the rig at the side, loads of different places. Turns out, just putting them on the back of the pedals gets the absolute best results in terms of amount of detail and feel that's perceptible to me as the driver. Though, obviously if you've got lower end pedals, you're not gonna be able to put these on it because they, they do have weight to them and they will affect things. If you've got, uh, these are the Mecha Cup 1 pedals or like Husingvale pedals or something, you should be all right because you can dial them in and still they'll still feel really good. In some ways, actually, the throttle feels a bit nice with a bit of weight on it. But lower end pedals, you'll probably have to compromise and put the pucks uh, on your pedal tray or somewhere else. It's also going to depend on how solid your rig is as to how the vibration goes through to you. But uh, as you can see, they're just wired here on the pedals for me. And uh, that's it, really. It's just a simple case of wiring the two pedal pucks and the bass puck at the back to the knob sound mini and um, once you've done that you plug it into your USB and uh, you're ready you're ready to start experiencing pure knob sound immersion but onto the software and it's really quite simple so you just plug in the sound card amplifier into windows and it will just pop up as a standard sound device if you click on it in windows assuming it's all plugged in and working you should hear some noise coming out of the tactile transducers on the pedals and the seat the, the bass speaker once you've uh, got that all plugged in you then need to load up the amazing sim hub software now, when you first load the SimHub software, you'll think, oh my God, it's all this crap, it's so convoluted and confusing. But honestly, it's really actually quite elegant and quite simple to use. It's very much like Content Manager for Assetto Corsa. The first time you load it up, it feels like you've been bombarded. But after a little bit of using it, you're actually like, oh, this is pretty simple and easy to use. So what we want specifically on the SimHub software is to go to the Shakeout Base Shakers option and we want to then go to the sound output tab and if you look down the list what well, you'll see something like this in my case because i do youtube i've got god knows how many sound devices plugged in you should see something like speakers usb 2 device basically you've got to find the speakers or the sound device that is your sound card for the transducers so this is mine in this case so i'm going to enable it and then you want to make sure that it's selected to be on front and rear now the reason why you want to do this is because it's just a two channel sound card i.e left and right speaker um, you basically just have front and rear of the car as an option if you had a four channel sound card you could have uh, as, um, actuators or uh, transducers on each corner of your sim rig and do effects based off each wheel you can go absolutely go mental <laughs> on this in terms of how much you want to set it up but i have to say after a lot of fiddling around and experimentation i do have a four channel sound card i actually found just having two channels and this configuration work perfectly fine and gives you all the information you really need so with that said we've got front and rear set up there if you click test now if i click the front my pedals vibrate which is great because that's what we want to happen and if you click rear then my bottom vibrates which is great because that's the rear of the car so now we've got that set up and that's working there when we click that uh, you can also adjust the volume here if you want to set the overall maximum volume for it um, but we've got that set up and then we want to go to the effects profile and i'll create a new one because of course i've been using this already i will make a new one so you create new profile and we'll call it uh, gamer muscle knob sound and uh, you can choose what game uh, you want it to launch uh, up with each profile you make so different sims you might want to have it operate differently I'll just keep leave it on any game for now as this is more demonstration um, and then uh, what I found is this slider here is I find it better to have this reduced otherwise sim hub will sort of try, try and dial in some of the stuff and it makes it more variable I find at first it's better to have this on a lower setting, um, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then you can just add a description to your profile, whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. So I've created the uh, profile there, and this is the, the main thing I found. So you could go to town 
with tons of effects and options like road vibration, uh, ABS, traction control, God knows what, G-force <laughs> vibrations. But after far too much time pissing around with this, what I've really found is for if you want immersion combined with actual information, you really only need or want uh, wheel slip um, and the gear shift effect uh, for, for, for letting you just have a bit of a, a immersion for the gear shift. Now the wheel slip basically um, gives you vibration depending on how much slip there is on the front, it will vibrate the front pedals, or on the rear it will vibrate the, the your seat. And it really lets you know how much you're pushing through corners, it also lets you know if you're locking up by the vibration, um, and just it just gives you a good feel for what if you if you're overdriving or underdriving the car, which is really what you you know what's the point of having motion if it doesn't tell you anything. Um, so to set up the wheel slip with just the two channels that we've got here, we're gonna choose front and rear, and then if I click that again, I can feel that on my on my feet, and if I click this, I can feel that on my bottom. You can choose the volume for the individual effect here, and so I'll turn that up a bit and um, that is basically it for the wheel slip so whenever the car slips in the game it will affect this and you'll feel it um, through the through the pedals and through your bum it really is that simple and it really does just just work pretty much straight away uh, absolutely fantastic you can also if it's vibrating too much it's too sensitive it's vibrating all the time or you only want it to feel the vibration when you're really pushing and it's really slipping a lot you can adjust this uh, sensitivity response curve so you can add like a little bit of a dead zone in there um and or adjust the uh, change the actual shape of the vibration and really dial it into exactly what you want to what kind of vibration feel you get from it so we've got that set up obviously it's not dialed in perfectly but that that will actually respond to what's going on in the game and the gear shift um we'll just set up which is literally just a clunk every time you change gear um and i find it's just really nice immersion it really lets you know that you've gone into gear and by having the the uh, large speaker on the, the back of the chair thud <laughs> when you actually go into the gear uh, it's just it's just really nice um what I would say is you want to click this high priority thing for the gear shift so it never so it always does the gear shift thud it's never going to be overwhelmed by the other setting if you're gear shifting whilst going through maximum slip angle what's really nice with this software is you can have it running and adjust settings and fiddle around with it once you're in the simulator so you can really you know dial it into exactly what you want so i've got a seto corsa here with the uh, mazda mx5 and as you can see we've got the wheel slip setting on the screen and you can see there the graph displays the top one is displaying the front uh, tires and the bottom one the rear and so as we understeer there you can really feel that going over and it does a sort of ramps up from a from a light sort of tickle a light little fairy tickle to if you go full on understeer you get <laughs> total tire carcass rampage vibration it's it's like someone slapping your foot with a with a paddle now because um the the speaker on the the rear or the transducer on the rear is much larger than the ones on the pedals the pucks you do actually get a different type of transducer motion and vibration and it's more of a kind of um, bassy type feel that you get from the rear one. It's more like uh, if you were to be sat on a subwoofer type situation as opposed to a very uh, high detailed uh, vibration. So, like the, the foot pedals feel more like a more, more kind of like drill like, <laughs> more punchy, uh, whereas the rear feels more speaker like. And, Again, having messed around with stuff, I actually found that worked as works out as a really nice solution, um, and uh, just feels immersively right uh, with the nature of how this then goes through the the seat. But um, yeah, so if we if we're going through this and you you, you want to fiddle with the settings on the fly, um, another thing you can adjust is the frequency of the transducers. So if you feel like the the vibration is too high frequency and just feels more like a toothbrush <laughs> or is a bit unnatural then you can lower the frequency of that vibration and that will then 
shape the the feel that you get from the tactile transducer um the lower i, I found to be honest for this predominantly using wheel slip and trying to get that somewhat realistic feel of a tire carcass vibrating if you've ever been on a in, in a real uh, car at a racetrack if you really push the front of a car through a corner um or incidentally if you're landing a, a light aircraft if your tires are slipping the, the the rubber tends to do this thing where it bites loses grip bites loses grips and and you feel it as a really aggressive vibration in the cockpit if you want to get that kind of feel i've found setting the base effect frequency to sort of between 30 and 45 uh, are good values if you go higher you get more drill toothbrush type feel and if you go lower you get to a point where you can't actually really feel any details because the frequency is just too low to feel anything ultimately you can mess around with it and do whatever you want <laughs> for hours on end so basically it's the ultimate thing for sim racers you love it because we're not here to drive we're here to mess around with knobs um what i would say pro tip definitely have the sound amplifier in a position where you can adjust it such as where i've got mine i can just change the volume on the amplifier itself so even outside the software i can turn it up or turn it down both the pedals and the and the seat um that was good i had it in a different position and it was a, a pain to change the, uh, the volume on it and also it's very easy to then unplug it and turn it off greatly reducing the uh, fire hazard potential so that is a great position just behind the chair um i would also say um i'm not sure if the uh, the data box the way i've got it wired up and the the um the bass speaker the you know the 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 amp here is supposed to be a well it's listed as 30 watts on one part of amazon 50 watt on some other promotional material I'm not 100% convinced that it's not going to spontaneously combust. So if you do buy this exact setup that I'm using and your sim rig bursts into flames, uh, not my fault. <laughs> I haven't had any problems, but you might. So do your own research on your uh, on making sure that the ohms and the wattage and everything isn't going to cause a fire. Um, but all said and done, uh, this is absolutely fantastic in terms of feel and as i say information from the simulator some of the sims out there unfortunately don't take full advantage of what a steering wheel can put out the original assetto corsa um you can actually get away with not having all this stuff and you can pretty much feel exactly what the car's doing just from the force feedback even with a wheel like the g25 i racing acc um and some of the other sims you really do get a, quite a bit of benefit from being able to actually feel this slip uh, additional slip vibration from the rear and the front and it means that you maybe can turn the sound volume down and not depend so much on the the tire scrub sound as a reference um but outside of that actually in helping you to drive the feeling of being in something that's not completely <laughs> static apart from the wheel is also removed with this that you get those vibrations that makes you feel more like you're actually sat in something that's moving which is just a great immersion boost if you do this with vr it will take things to another level as well because then you're you're blocked out from your sim rig and you sort of when you do things in vr your brain fills in the gaps even more so um it's great i like i totally 100 and 300 percent i hate it when people go above 100 <laughs> percent four million percent um, I, I really recommend this as something to do. Uh, you know, it's £150. That's still a sizable amount of money. I'd, 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 you know, if you've got a G25, maybe get a T300, upgrade other stuff first, maybe get a load cell pedal and stuff. But if you've already got those basic things covered, uh, this is a fantastic addition to the sim rig that adds a load of immersion at a good price um i'm really glad i did it if you want to use the same stuff that i got i'll put the links in the description as i say it might be a fire hazard so double check that yourself um i've got an amazon affiliate link so if you use that to buy anything on amazon or especially this stuff i appreciate that because that gets me money helps support the channel but uh, that is it for this video let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and uh, of course if you subscribe to the channel you'll be notified when we next do a live stream so you can just ask in the live stream and i'll answer questions uh, but until then happy vibrating happy sim racing happy tea drinking and goodbye everybody